guys, it's your best fight friends. I'm Rachel, that's Kelsey, and today we're talking about Hamza Kamaya Chimaev. It's <laughs> when we just practiced it, I, tried. I threw you off with I tried. Yeah. We're talking about Who doesn't he want to fight, Rachel? That's the question. Yeah. So <laughs> Not who who does he want to fight, but who doesn't he want to fight? Right. Now fighters you? do this a lot. Where they call out a lot of people. Sometimes I find it boring and I don't care about it. With uh, Chimaev, I love it. I love it, yeah. And I think it's two parts. The fact that he's new to the, like he's up and coming. And he's been flat out like exciting and dominant inside the cage. Yeah. I mean, in his last lose. fight. He's picked up a dude and just kind of <laughs> carried him around the octagon like a legitimate foe. <laughs> picked him up like he was a child. <laughs> Talked to Dana White. And then submitted him and just <laughs> finished him, whatever. Amazing. Yeah, so let's talk about his recent list of call-outs. I guess he just took to social media and started calling people out. Love it. The toughest opponent on that list, maybe, would be Brock Lesnar. Especially under WWE rules. Right. <laughs> what? Yeah, but, or yeah, I mean, you're talking about legitimately a four course heavyweight world champion in the UFC. Brock! Lesnar, can you imagine, Rachel? I don't understand what... It obviously can't... I mean, is he serious? Maybe. <laughs> is he serious? Could he win? Would he pick up Brock Lesnar like a toddler? Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> you, If you would have told me that he was going to pick up the last guy he bought, like... Like, Who would have believed that? I'd have been like, whatever. All right, he's that also happened, but it did. He also picked out another heavyweight, but challenged him to a wrestling match, and that would be Daniel Cormier. Yeah, and DC. Do you want to see that, Rachel? Do you want to see DC in a wrestling match with? Now this isn't WWE wrestling, right? This is legitimate. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is wrestling, which would be DC's. Yeah, he went to the Olympics, right? Wrestling. So he yeah, kind of knows. DC what's up there. said, to call him said he was crazy. There's no DC way. Like games. <laughs> He would he would defeat DC in nice. wrestling. All right, another big legend that uh, Chimaev um, called out called out George St Pierre. George St Pierre, man, <laughs> whoa! And then that one, of course, obviously St Pierre. You know, for a long been time, retired. St Pierre has been talking about a a like yeah, final comeback fight. Habib Nurmagomedov. That's what the fight he wanted. I feel like this is he, justice. <laughs> No, but he doesn't want to fight a welterweight who also fights at middleweight. Like he doesn't want to fight Kamara Usman. George St. Pierre doesn't, and he obviously I don't think would want to fight Shemayev either. There's nothing to gain for him there. Yeah, yeah. But fun regardless. Let's talk about um, something that might actually be more reasonable. It could potentially happen. Could potentially happen. Yeah, it could happen. And that would be should happen maybe even Colby Covington. Yeah, and that's super legitimately. Super interesting. It's gone both ways. I know even before this stuff that you looked up that Colby Covington had talked about exposing Chimaya that he wants to fight him. He said, bring it on now. And I think Chimaya has said, let's do it, right? So that's a potential really, really interesting fight in the welterweight division. All right. Well, here's what Colby Covington had to say about it. This is um, from our friend Steven over at Heavy. Uh wrote a story on this, and Covington was quoted, he's a joke, he needs to beat somebody worthy, someone in the top five. Um, the media loves to rush these kids and these hype jobs. That's the thing I saw, yeah. <laughs> so, but he apparently he went on and said, if you guys want to rush a guy, take some time off his life and send him for a hospital treatment. Take some time off his life. Then yeah, the door is open for that. I love doing good business, and I love doing business with the UFC. It would be an honor to beat whoever they put in front of me, yada, yada, yada. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. So he says he'll he'll do it. So what do you think about that matchup, like, in reality? Because people talk, but what do we think about that? Yeah, that's the thing. People talk, <laughs> and it sounds like he wants a lot of money. <laughs> but, just from that quote, yeah, the matchup does intrigue me, because Chemayev looks like Superman, but... You know, it's easier to look like Superman when you're not fighting the likes of Colby Covington, yeah. who I think has clearly shown that he's the best welterweight beyond Kamaru Usman. We saw him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ in a way that, frankly, nobody else really has recently, really in both fights. In the last fight, even, it was a close fight. 
he hurt Kamaru Usman sometimes in that fight. It was an interesting fight. And you know what I think about Kamaru Usman. I think he's the most dominant UFC champion, but most dominant fighter in the world right now. So that's interesting. That's a big jump up. Well, I think you make a really good point. And that's when these exciting fighters like come out and sometimes they can come up the ranks and be so exciting and dominant but then when they hit like people that are on their level all of a sudden it slows down and a lot of these guys will even sometimes have nicknames that are like remember this is over in boxing but keith thurman right what's his nickname one time <laughs> one time because he was knocking people out well not so much anymore you know it's harder to <laughs> knock out many back <laughs> yeah. so like the, my point yeah, is, is yeah, that you good... hit people on your level, and all of a sudden it kind of slows you down. So yeah. I don't know if uh, Chemayev, Colby, if that should be a match made in the near future. I would guess that uh, you know Chemayev can keep doing what he does, being him, and you know brash and calling people out. But whoever's managing him, him, which would be his team in connection with the UFC, I would imagine are gonna bring him up a bit more slowly. Yeah, I think they want to be aggressive, but to me that just isn't. Why well, would? I mean, it doesn't seem like a fight that would actually be made by all the parties, mm-hmm. right? That would legitimately. I know that if you ask any pro fighter like Kobe Covington or Hamza Chimaya, yeah, they'll fight each other. But are their managers going to be on board with that? Does the UFC want to make that fight? What are their plans for as the promoters? There's all sorts of other stuff that goes involved in making a fight happen, even in the UFC. And I don't think all everybody could get on the same page for it, but. If they did, Rachel, I'd love to see it. What if he could pick up Colby Covington like a baby? <laughs> yeah, I'm for Chemayev picking anybody up like a baby inside mm-hmm. the ring. I think that he should do it when his fight starts with whoever it's with. Then he could should go ahead and do it with the referee. And then with Bruce Buffer. And then if Dana White comes in, then go ahead and grab him. Daniel Cormier, too, if he comes in there to interview him. Pick up everybody like a baby. Exactly. Yes. Perfect. We're not going to pick you up like a baby because this is virtual. I mean, I guess I could draw a picture and then show it to you, but I'm not going to do that. But I would like you to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you think about a Colby, Kamayev, Kamayev, Colby matchup. I use first and last name, you know? I like mix it up. And I say whatever comes <laughs> whatever. out of my mouth. Whatever we call him. <laughs> We're here for it. We're here for him. <laughs>